I'm doing a little Wi-Fi testing here. We've got an edge router light that can handle up to gigabit switching. My house is about a third of a gigabit for downstream, about 300 megabits down and 30 up. And an Eero here, one of three hockey pucks in my house doing nothing else other than serving these two phones at the moment. And what are these two phones? This is an iPhone 6 Plus from two years ago. And this is an iPhone 7 Plus that came out all of five days ago or so. There's the double lens. All right, it's dark because I want the exposure set and staying set so that you can see the screen well. That's the focus here. Why? Because I'm about to do some speed tests. Now they're both on the same Wi-Fi network. So doing both concurrently is not the best test, but you know what, even if I do it sequentially, and play it back, I get similar speeds anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, let's just start with uh, this. This will be my own page. You can see a huge speed difference there. Now, of course, it's coming out of cache, but what if we just do it again? Here's alone. Still took four seconds or so out of cache. Is it here alone? A whole lot quicker. Uh, let's go into an article. Um, here's one that might still be in cache from earlier today, but that'll launch Safari. So I have solo mode there. Again, big difference in speed. Let's go to the home page. Let's go to an article that's never been visited from either phone, so I just published it today recently. So we're getting crazy speeds regardless. How about we try some website that's very uh, rich in media? CNN.com should do the trick. Uh, oops. Kind of messed that one up. Sorry about that. Let's go to a different article. So again, just big speed boost just with casual surfing the web. Boy, oh boy. Uh, a little annoying. Let's see if I can uh, tap a little more accurately this time. All right. Um, how about video playback? Probably really should not do both of these at once. So let me see if I can get that tap target right. There we go. Okay, video on the left. That's a little hard for you to see. Let's try this. Nope, that's better. All right. Wow, a little dark in here, sorry about that. I'm gonna have to hold this sideways. So I'm gonna reset this, and we're gonna get started with tap, tap. Start, tap. The video play back in about seven seconds. All right, let's try that again. Start tap. Instead of seven seconds, Happy anniversary four. Dinner, darling. So consistently better performance. How about something I do all the time, which is open up my last pass encrypted vault. So here we go. Just launching the app. Difference in CPU speed should be apparent. All right. So just getting the fingerprint was a lot faster. It could be, yeah, just start off a home automation app. Or Internet of Things, whatever you want to call it. So even that was like triple the speed just to invoke it. So sounds and haptic. Um, all right, a lesser tone on the right. Now, if they are resting on a, uh, let's see, a sound absorbing surface, um, you know, like a leg or a pocket or something like that, there is much less noise with 
the iPhone 7 Plus. Just point that out. So now we have some buffer there. Let's see if you hear the difference. Big difference in the sound level. Okay. Uh, whoops. Doesn't matter. It's quieter. Let's move along. Speed. Speed. Best way I found to show this will be Safari. Okay, let's make sure we only have one tab open. Sorry, it's gonna be a little awkward. Can't really edit the 4K video. Uh, not in any sane fashion anyway, so I'm just gonna go with publishing this video as is probably. I didn't really show you anything private in LastPass anyway. Okay, next. I'm ref refreshing the main DSL reports page. No, I'm not really sure if you'll be able to see this in 4K, but it does a better job with the desktop looking app. I've asked for desktop mode in Safari, and I've got them now both showing landscape. We have them roughly equal distance from the Eero. Not the most scientific. I realize that antenna orientation might matter a little bit, but I tried this earlier and it doesn't really matter. The iPhone 7 just trounces the iPhone 6 uh, every time. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do one at a time. So here we go, tapping on cable. Let me make this bigger so you can see what is going on. And let's do one at a time. Okay, about 100 down, about 30 up, and there's our scores. Put the next phone in the same exact spot. Touch cable and wait for it to finish. So considering they're both 802.11ac devices, I'd say three times the Wi-Fi speed is a rather satisfactory result. So I'm pretty pleased with the way that things are going so far. Uh, this is not just, you know, a Geekbench raw CPU score comparison where you read specs, but this is me consistently all day long getting similar results. Three times the network speed with the newer device versus the older. Um, hopefully you can see this at 1920, 1080 okay. I can actually read these screens, I'm really hoping. Uh, what else? I can do results and share. I'll bring up a little link to the actual test that I'll go ahead and probably tweet out or share at some point. And then you'll know what was behind this video with no smoke and mirrors or tricks. All right, I'm just going to finish up with something that doesn't have too much to do with speed, but it has to do with the double lens and an observation I had about this. Yeah, having no headphone port has already been 
a bit painful. It helps if I show you the right one. That's the one with the headphone port. And here's the one without, just the speaker. Anyhow, sorry, I hope this has been fixed there. Um, what I wanted to show you just quickly is the camera and the zoom. So watch this. If we zoom indoors, there's no jump as it gets to two. Why is that? Because it's sticking with the same lens. So only in a bright room, you can take a business card or something and just cover one of the lenses and you can kind of see what's going on here. So clearly we've got a lens cover now, right? And indeed, there's no jump. But if we had a super bright room, you would see a jump from one lens to the other. So just pointing out that that's a limitation uh, that they're using the good lens, not the less light sensitive new 2x zoom lens for indoor situations. So you don't get the benefit of uh, optical zoom indoors generally. It's not very well lit. Okay, that's about it for the speed of launching the apps that you're most likely to launch in your day-to-day -day use. Uh, having three gig of memory on the faster device, let's put them in the same order I had them before, on the left, on the right, excuse me, the iPhone 7 Plus on the right, the iPhone 6 Plus on the left. Having more memory does mean when I go back to an app like the browser, it's less likely to have to pull the whole page in from memory. It's too bad I wasn't on the screen. Let's try that again. So we go to some other app. Uh, what's something I can launch? All right. You can see again how fast on the right we are. Now we go back to Safari. All right, well, that wasn't a good example because there was still plenty of memory to have just two tabs loaded. Anyhow, uh, oh, Geekbench would be fun to read and to show you. We'll end with that. Okay, Geekbench, I don't really have to show you me. Uh, wait around for you to see the benchmark, I suppose. I can't remember how long they take, but you can see the gigahertz difference and the memory right there in that screen. Uh, pretty big boost in two years. So people are definitely bashing the product for being iterative and not very imaginative and the same shape and size and everything is my two-year-old phone, but boy, the horsepower under the covers is making a very real difference for me. Uh, a noticeable difference in day-to-day -day stuff that I do all the time. So I am not complaining. No phone is perfect. Android fans will hate this video. That's fine. I would be eager to see the latest from Samsung and, and others uh, as far as their speeds with Wi-Fi using the same Aero device. I think that'd be kind of fun to see. Uh, 1.4, 1 I think is the name of the Aero codem on, by the way. All right. And there's the Geekbench results. Go through, we can see all kinds of stuff about the cores, integer math, floating point. Now Apple's charts talking about, you know, double the speed or something. Well, this doesn't really bear that up, but memory is one that sticks out in my mind uh, and my, for my eyeballs, where we have quite a big boost here. And that's really showing in my day-to-day -day use. So there you have it. I think I'm done with this little overview of the iPhone 6 Plus versus iPhone 7 Plus from a performance perspective. Hopefully you enjoyed this video.